Welcome to Voices of the Community, which explores critical issues facing Northern California communities. We introduce you to the voices of community thought leaders and change makers who are working on solutions that face our fellow individual community members, neighborhoods, cities, and our region. This is George Coster, your host. This episode is part of a series of interviews we conducted through our participation in the Bay Area Video Coalition's TV show titled San Francisco Nonprofits Spotlight. The interviews were conducted via Zoom from April to June 2020 during the height of the first phase of the COVID-19 pandemic and the shelter-in-place requirements. The goal of the series is to shine a spotlight on the nonprofits and their staff who are struggling to deal with the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic on their operations, services, and sustainability. The series of interviews we conducted feature voices from a cross-section of organizations that make up the fabric of our community. Each of them brings a unique perspective on how they and we are dealing with the issues facing our community during the pandemic. So I think the first thing for us that was sort of an indicator that things were about to change really significantly for us was we look at our find food page on our website as sort of an indicator. And in February this year, that site had about 900 visits. In April of this year, that site had 25,000 visits. In this episode, we feature the voice of Katie McKnight, the Director of Community Engagement with the San Francisco Marin Food Bank. The San Francisco Marin Food Bank's mission is to end hunger in San Francisco and Marin, where one in four neighbors is at risk of hunger. The food bank was providing food for 30,000 households per week. This was all before the COVID-19 pandemic hit and tens of thousands of people in San Francisco and Marin lost their jobs. The need is estimated now to have doubled over the past 90 days. Over 100 of the food bank's 250-plus food pantries had to close because of the COVID-19 pandemic. The food bank is operating 20-plus pop-up pantries at schools and community centers to address the massive food insecurity facing our neighbors. To help feed homebound seniors who used to visit San Francisco Marin Food Bank pantries for groceries, they have created the Pantry at Home program to deliver food directly to 7,000 plus seniors. I'm joined remotely via Zoom by Katie McKnight, the Director of Community Engagement with the San Francisco Marin Food Bank. Katie, thanks for being here today. Thanks so much for having me, George. So, uh, Katie, since you run the volunteer program and work out in the community, how has the COVID-19 epidemic impacted the San Francisco Marin Food Bank, and what are you seeing out there in the community? Yeah, George, you know, um, I've been at the food bank seven and a half years, and we've never seen anything like this before. We've never seen such a rapid increase in the needs of our services. Um, That is something that has we just were not uh, not anticipating it. And we didn't really know what was going to happen when COVID and all the shelter in place really began. And for us, you know, right now we're serving an additional 30,000 households a week. So we've nearly doubled our distribution. And I think that's the, the first thing we're noticing is just how severe the need is and how severely it spiked. And then additionally, it's who those participants are. So we have our participants that may have lost access to the pantry that they typically attended. But really what we're learning now, the more I'm out in the community, the more I'm talking to those that are coming to our pantries, it's those that this is often their first time needing food assistance. And it's due in in direct um, to job loss from COVID or being affected specifically by COVID. So for me, That's one of the things that really stands out is how quickly the need um, has spiked and how large that need is and really who it is that we're serving and and seeing that that shift uh, so much more than it looked like pre-COVID-19. And so with the the COVID-19 and and, uh, the impact of more uh, families and children asking for food, what have you and your team done to respond to the situation? So I think the first thing for us that was sort of an indicator that things were about to change really significantly for us was we look at our find food page on our website as sort of an indicator. And in February this year, that site had about 900 visits. In April of this year, that site had 25,000 visits. So we, you know, we started seeing that increase and we knew early on we were going to need to pretty quickly and uh, adjust our services. So we've done that a couple of ways. 
the, the biggest way in which we've had impact in the community is what we are calling our pop-up pantries. So we had over 110 of our pantry sites out of 275 had to close directly because of COVID-19. Right now, as of mid-May, about 88 of them are back online. So we are, we're feeling pretty good about that. But right now we are, we know that there's increased need. So we've opened these pop-up pantries. This week we are opening our 23rd pop-up pantry across San Francisco and Marin. And these are pop our pantries in every quadrant of the city and across Marin where our families, our participants can go each week to gain access to healthy grains, protein, and fresh produce. When we first started these pop-ups in late March, we were looking at serving about 300 to 600 households each week. Now all of those pop-ups are serving over 1,200, 1,500. We have one pop-up that serves consistently 1,700 households each week. Wow, that's, uh, that's, that's quite a volume. Would you mind sharing with the audience probably, you know, one of your kind of favorite stories or moments through the pop-up pantries? Because, you know, now more than ever, the, you know, the food banks are out in the community itself instead of having people come to your site. Yeah, I, you know, I, I think back to one of the first pantries we opened was a site um, out in the Bayview. And I was there sort of acting as the, the greeter, helping manage the line, answer questions. And um, we don't ask many questions of our participants when they come to our pantries, but I like to try to strike up conversation. And I spoke to this woman who is a barista at an independent coffee shop and had lost her job. And we were just talking, I was asking how she heard about the food bank, was she familiar with the food bank? And she said, you know, I knew that the food bank was there and was providing food, but it wasn't anything, I never thought I would need food assistance. Um, she asked if I had kids, which I said no. And she said, I have two high school age boys. Do you know how much one high school age boy eats, let alone two high school age boys? And she took a pause and got a little teary eyed and said, I didn't know what I was going to do. I didn't know how I was going to be able to do my job as a mom and keep my children fed. And then I heard about the food distribution. I heard that I had access to food and it, it, adds a little bit of relief and makes me feel a little bit better that I know I can at least do that and provide for my sons. And I think that for me was one of the moments where we get so caught up in the logistics and we're moving so quickly and trying to serve so many people that sometimes the impact and the true stories of those that we're serving can, um, can get lost. And for me, that was that moment where I was able to sort of take a deep breath and reflect on the work that we're doing and knowing that you know all of the support we're gathering all the food that we're distributing it really does mean something and it really is tangible and we are directly affecting the lives of those that we're serving um, and i think that's a moment that i've been carrying with me for six weeks now and uh, it still brings you know gives me goosebumps and and it makes me pretty emotional emotional just to think and that was just one of the thousands of households that we are serving in response to COVID-19. Thank you. That was really great. Um, so besides the pop-up pantries and now you're doing the deliveries um, to people, some especially seniors, for example, um, what additional needs are you seeing out there? Yeah. So to your point, we're, we're doing the pantries. We're doing our deliveries to 11,000 seniors who have access to their pantry program we call Pantry our home delivered grocery program. We are also seeing a significant increase in need for CalFresh, which is the SNAP for the food stamp program here in California. Um, and we have a whole team that's dedicated to helping those apply. Um, last year in March, 39,000 people across the state of California applied for those benefits. This year in March, 94,000 people across California applied for those benefits. So one of the ways we're helping is helping people get access to as many benefits as possible. Um, and we also know that we are facing challenges in food procurement. You know, the price of eggs or the price of protein has increased. Um, we know that we are challenged with recruiting volunteers. The, the more pop-up sites we can open is dependent upon our ability to recruit volunteers and our ability to secure sites to have these pop-ups. Let me also know that our participants 
food insecurity is just one of the challenges that they're facing in response to COVID-19. So, you know, really looking at all of the other agencies that are providing services in San Francisco and, and identifying how we can work together, how we can refer participants back and forth to each other so that the participants are getting access to all of the services um, that they need because food is food is one part of this and it's a pretty it's a pretty big part but you know the the effects of COVID-19 on on those that we're serving which you know are the most vulnerable populations in San Francisco and now really have expanded to to being a greater population in San Francisco and Marin um we're trying to as holistically as possible meet all of their all of their needs as best we can so uh Katie um how could people you know basically get involved with the food bank. You know, there's volunteering, obviously, dropping off food. Uh, you guys are running a funding campaign. Could you share a little bit about that? We are, yeah. So one of one of the best ways to help the food bank is by making a financial donation. So right now, um, we do have a COVID-19 specific funding campaign, $100,000 match that is helping us to meet the increased need. For every dollar donated, the food bank is able to uh, provide two meals to the community. So the way the food bank works, we purchase tractor trailer loads of product. We work on a really large scale, um, which comes with a cost. So all that financial support is really impactful to us. Donations can be made right on our website, www.sfmfoodbank.org, and you'll see the big banner right on the top that says COVID-19 support. Additionally, we need volunteer help. So we are staffing volunteers in our warehouse. We're helping us pack all these senior food boxes and bags that are being delivered. We need volunteers at all of our pop-up pantries as they continue to grow and we continue to add these pop-up pantries. And that can be done at volunteering.sfmfoodbank.org. Again, if you just go to our main website, you can get all the links to get involved. And then the third thing that, you know, I'm so grateful to be here with you today, Georgia, to talk about is, is awareness. I think people understand that there is an increased need because of COVID-19. And I think that the more we can share how direct, directly impacted so many uh, San Franciscans and folks in Marin really are by COVID-19. And, and we know that recovery is going to take a really long time. And especially for those most vulnerable populations, when we talk about that recovery and as that, that trickle down recovery, those will be the last to recover. And we are going to be here for them until um, you know everybody can get back on their feet or for those that will continue to need our services. So we are in this for the long haul. So the more people are talking about food and security, uh, the better for us. And so Katie, um, out of this complete meltdown, you know, what do you see are positive things that could come out of the COVID-19? You know, uh, it's like putting an x-ray on our system. So what do you see happening? Yeah, you know, there's a few ways I think that when we look back on COVID-19 and, and sort of, you know, debrief, if you will, I think there's, for me, the couple of things that initially stand out is I hope that people can take comfort in knowing that the food bank and these um, safety net services will always be there and that we can weather nearly anything together. And I, I hope that people are able to take some comfort in that. But I would also say that this has allowed us to open up our eyes a little bit on our operating, both the food bank and, you know, at the city and governmental level. The way we're operating right now is very different than how the food bank would typically operate. We've had to be nimble, we've had to move quickly, we've had to pivot much faster than we typically would like to. And I think we've been able to be really successful in that. And I think this also gives us a chance to look at food insecurity as a whole and really looking at what are all the factors that can lead and cause an individual to face hunger? And what are the steps along the way? What are the other opportunities we can have as a community to affect change for those that we're serving to you know, help alleviate those challenges, help alleviate that fear, help alleviate the stress that comes with food insecurity? Um, and as I alluded to earlier, food insecurity is just one challenge that our participants face. So it has definitely been highlighted right now in, during COVID-19, and I hope that as we move forward, we can continue to look back and, and remember that this is one part of a much larger picture for those that are struggling in San Francisco and Marin, and that we can work together on a, on a bigger level to affect change for, for these participants. And then I think the last thing that really has stood out to me is just how generous the community has been, both our corporate partners, our financial donors, our volunteer donors, our other community partners. And 
really think we're learning that we are much more nimble than we thought we would be. And as a, as a community that is trying to serve our neighbors in need, and that, you know, I take comfort and I take solace in knowing that we do have the ability to pretty quickly affect really big change. Um, doubling our distribution in seven and a half, eight weeks uh, is pretty rapid for us. And we've been able to do it because we have so much support. Thank you. So really appreciate everything that you and the food bank are doing. And we'll make sure that people have the contact information on how to engage as volunteer donation, et cetera. Please stay safe out there as you're out in the community and, you know, please keep uh, helping our community feed themselves. Obviously it's a dire need. Thank you, George. I really appreciate the opportunity to talk about the work that we're doing. We're all, we're all really proud to be food bankers right now. And um, thank you for letting us share a little insight into that with, with you and your audience. Thank you. That's it for this episode of Voices of the Community. You've been listening to the voice of Katie McKnight the Director of Community Engagement with the San Francisco Marin Food Bank. The San Francisco Marin Food Bank and their pantry partners distribute food without asking many questions, other than a few basics such as zip code and household size. Additionally, they don't ask participants to sign up or show ID or about immigration status, and they provide food for unhoused neighbors. The food bank also helps clients to sign up with CalFresh, the state of California's version of food stamps. As Katie mentioned, food insecurity is just one of the many challenges that food bank participants are facing during this pandemic. We hope that you enjoyed the insights, points of view, and personal stories from the voices of changemakers and their nonprofits featured in the series. To find out more and get engaged with the nonprofit and staff members featured in this episode, please go to my website, georgecoster.com, and click on Voices of the Community to find links to this episode. Please consider a donation and volunteering to provide a hand up to your fellow community members. I want to thank my associate producer, Eric Estrada, as well as the wonderful team at Bay Area Video Coalition. Go to www.bavc.org to find out more about Bay Area Video Coalition services. To listen to our next episode in this series and to our archived past shows, which feature community voices working on solutions to critical issues facing Northern California communities, please go to georgecoster.com. While you're on our website, please consider making a donation to help us provide future shows just like this. Please rate us on iTunes or wherever you get your podcast and share the story with your friends. Follow us on Twitter at George Coster and please email us at george at georgecoster.com. I'm George Coster in San Francisco, and thank you for listening.